you type the word Montessori into iTunes or Google Play, you'll get over 500 hits. So what does Montessori mean? No better person than Valerie uh, to tell it to you because she was, she's a real deal, she was a Montessori teacher. Well, Warren and I were, were exchanging emails trying to um, decide on the topic of my talk today. I suggested that um, I could share some of my experience in rebranding. I'm not a branding expert at all, but we spent most of last year um, looking at our brand because we founded uh, Les Croisettes in 2010, and we were at a stage where we were having a lot of difficulties with the, um, the words in our name for keywords because three can be translated and can be written in a number or, or letter. And the word L in French can be written in three different ways as well. So it's very complicated. We have tried many different ways of writing it, so the brand had become completely inconsistent. And um, we were also at a point where 80% of our sales were done outside of France, so we were wondering if it was still relevant to have a very, very French name. So we hired somebody, an expert um, in branding. We hadn't decided that we were going to change. But we went through the whole process, and we came up uh, six months later with Adoki. Now, I'm not going to dive into how and why we cho chose that name. It's a completely, completely different talk. But um, we're very happy with the results, and, um, and so I can share some of that uh, with you. Now, as I was thinking about what I was going to tell you this morning, obviously the, the Montessori part of it, you know, Montessori more than a brand, there's a brand aspect and the Montessori aspect and the Montessori sort of crept up everywhere so we'll see. This is a bit more about us. So three co-founders, three women in tech. It's not very uh, every day that you see that. And um, our uh, two of us are Montessori teachers and our mission is to empower children by making them active learners on the, on the tablets. We really try to get them in, engaged in what they're, uh, they're doing. And, um, uh, and active. And so I just wanted to see, because I said there was going to be some pedagogy and some branding, who the audience is. So point your lasers to see what the audience looks like this morning, please. What, so who are we? Yeah, who are you? Are you a geek? Are you a teacher? Are you like a business person? Or none of the above? Mr. Keek. So a lot of geeks. Geeky teacher. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a key, key, teacher geek. Right. So, so then the next question is, um, are you more interested in the pedagogy or in the brand name? Okay, it's almost even. Which is good, because one of the conclusions of the six months that we spent with the, with the branding expert is that for us, uh, Montessori and our brand are so tightly linked together that I couldn't be standing here this morning and talk about one and not the other. So I'm a teacher, right? Um, I like everybody to, to, I like to lay grounds so that everybody's talking about the same thing. So here are three definitions um, of what a brand is. Um, I could get you to take your lasers out to vote on which one you think is correct. But actually, they're all, they're all uh, real definitions. And as Scott mentioned uh, on the panel the other night, you probably know this, but the origin of branding, everybody knows this, comes from the mark that, um, that the cowboys used to make on the livestock. And it also says criminals were and slaves. But, so it, it, it's a physical branding that's at the origin of, of the word. And there are different ways of looking at branding. You can have a product strategy, so each product has a brand name, or you can have an, um, what I would call a, an umbrella strategy. Um, but I think what's interesting in this is that the brand has to relay the qualities, the, really, the personality of, of your product. And so if you have to spend time on your brand, this is what you have to think of. And when you look at all these logos, 
And it's amazing. I was looking, I was looking for information on the internet on how many brands and logos the human brain can remember, but I, I couldn't find a number. But there's a game on the iPhone called Logo Quiz, and it is just amazing. You play that game for hours, and you just you realize how many logos and brands you know, and even. My nine and ten year old, they know so many different brands. It's unbelievable. We, we saw an interesting statistic about, I can't remember the numbers exactly, but it was like the average child in America can distinguish between 800 different brands or 1,000 yeah. different yeah. brands. So they only know 10 kinds of trees. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, what is a brand? Can, the audience, can you just shout um, a few words that you that you think are key words? If you think of what a brand is supposed to to, to contain, um, to to be a good brand, because the words that I was thinking of were trust, value. Some some brands, you know, you're not going to get quality, but they're cheap, right? So you know at least. The value that you're getting from that brand. Consistency, I think, is, is important as well. Um, that's how the, some of these brands went global, where you know that if you go to McDonald's anywhere in the world, you're getting something as close to your um, experience at home. Expectations, what you what you expect from uh, the results that you're going to get from buying the product. Um, familiarity, do you relate to it, or is it something that you, you're not close to, and the logo that we, that we saw just earlier. So, then the Montessori um, aspect of it, as Warren said, Montessori is not a registered trademark, so anybody can use it. Um, what comes to your mind when you hear Montessori? Do you think of Maria Montessori? Do you think of Montessori schools? Do you think of Google? They, they, they talk about it all the time, that they went to a Montessori school, or have you never heard the word Montessori? Right. So Montessori schools, so what words, sorry? The stuff they use there and the sequencing. The material. The material and the method of, of having a sequence that makes a lot of sense. Right. So, so what are the words that you, th I thought your answer was going to be Montessori schools. So, what are the words that, um... <laughs> <laughs> Magic <laughs> reminds <laughs> you. Had to predict. Um, what words come to mind when, when you hear Montessori? Self-teaching materials. Self-teaching materials? Okay. Manipulatives. Manipulatives? Okay. Uh, expensive. That's a word that usually comes to mind as well, but expensive is, is value, isn't it? So I just rewrote all, all these words again. I think trust people who look for Montessori. They know, they have an expectation as to why they put their kids in a Montessori school. Value, it's expensive, but because they have expectations, they're ready, they're willing to, to pay for it. I'm just curious. How many people here went to Montessori? Well, oh, oh yeah, or sent their kids to Montessori. Okay, two questions. You went to Montessori. How many? How many send their kids to Montessori? <laughs> yeah, then then there's also. How many can't afford to send their kids to Montessori? Consistency is an issue with Montessori because of the because of the the fact that it's not a registered trademark and that you can open a Montessori school if you like and no, nobody will go and check if it's any good or if it's, if you're even doing Montessori inside. So then there's word of mouth that will um, help or not the school go up or go up the charts and um, be a good one or not. But consistency is a problem, and the logo, well, they don't have a logo, because it's not a registered trademark, right? So, but the rest, I think, um, is um, Montessori can say that they, they um, well, 
it's a, it's a brand. So for us, the the learning really was um, that Montessori was we hadn't thought of it as a brand. And I just want to take you really quickly through the the main points of the pedagogy because, as I said, it's part of me. So here are some definitions um, of learning. I highlighted the words that come, that always come, knowledge, skills, understanding, relay, teacher, experience being taught. And to me, the real difference between traditional learning and a Montessori school is that in a traditional system, the teacher is the source of knowledge and the point of education is that it, the teacher has to relay his or her knowledge to the learner and fill her up with knowledge. So uh, Maria Montessori say, you know, the, the, that traditionally you look at a child like as an empty vase and you have to fill it up. Whereas in a Montessori school we don't do that. We see a child coming with potential and it's our role to release the potential. So in a, in a Montessori school, everything is based around the environment. The classroom is considered as a prepared environment by the adult who acts as a guide. And so everything is done within the environment to help the child release their potential. So the child is unique, is seen as unique, and is centered to everything that is done in the class. Every child is considered individually. There's no um, group lessons, there are some, but most of them are individual. And the material, um, which is adapted to every sensitive period that the child goes through, is there to help the, the adult um, guide the child. So the, the, the system, oh sorry, the system is really easy. You show the child how to use the material, they use it on their own, they, they, you know how children love to repeat uh, the same activity over and over again. With repetition comes concentration, and as they become better and better at doing it, they increase their self-confidence and they become more and more autonomous. And another very uh, singular thing about Montessori schools is that the age groups are mixed, it's three to six, and the point of that is that the younger ones learn, uh, learn from the older ones, and the older ones increase their autonomy and self-confidence by teaching the younger ones. And the overall objective is that they generalize abstract concepts. So, what we found um, when we're thinking about the brand and our product and everything is that to us, the Montessori, Montessori is a philosophy. It's really, there's, I, as I said, I could not be here and not talk about it. And I hope you're feeling my passion. <laughs> so this is, this is an extract from our website. And we wanted really to communicate in our brand and everything that we do that the child is at the center of everything that we do. Everything that we design, all the apps that we make, we want, um, we think of every, every child as being unique and we try to make our product as adaptive as possible as I said earlier um, we have an algorithm inside our apps that, uh, that follows the child and that's seamless and um, also we want them to attain uh, autonomy, self-confidence and we want them to generalize the concept so we always start in our apps with things that are very concrete, we explain what we're looking for, and we guide them to towards abstract concepts. So I think Michelle was, was talking about that. What, the branding goes beyond the logo. The work that we did was we really rethought about everything that we designed, and we set up a charter of what our apps should contain or not contain. And so the Montessori part of it is really, even though it's not in our, um, in our company name, in our branding, it's not company name, it, it acts as a guide for us into everything, that in the, into our marketing, into our product design, to everything. 
So I guess the conclusion is that Montessori is a super brand for us. And, and um, I put the, the iron there. I think it's really in our DNA. It's really, you know, the, the, I like the, the iron because it's physical. It leaves a physical mark. And I think that um, we, our objective, I talked about our mission, is really to try and make a difference in children's life. So we don't want to leave a physical mark on them, but hopefully we will leave a, a much nicer uh, mark and make them active learners, but also thinkers. Because the one thing that we hate above all is learning by heart and not understanding what you're doing. Um, and even while I was training as a teacher, I was 30 plus pregnant with my second child and I finally understood subtraction thanks to the Montessori material because I had just learned to do it and never understood what it really meant. So um, I guess my invitation to you today, some of you have already created brands, some of you are in the process of doing it. So it's a very interesting process to go through. There's a lot of um, uh, texts and books that you can find out there that will um, guide you and a lot of good experts. Um, I just put down uh, a couple of words to, that can help you start your reflection if you're, if you're thinking of doing. Well, um, this one is this one is a big one. Is it registered? Is it available? You know, and you have to look at the website. Is the website available? And is it? I mean, Dan has had a, some issues with with branding. It's something that you, we have to deal with. It was easier, I think, five years ago. Now it's more complicated. Is it distinctive? Distinctive? Is it easy to remember? Is it international? Um, is it simple? And we wanted something that was easy to pronounce in every language. And does it express a benefit? Well, you, you won't know that until you've created products that um, go with the brand. Thank you very much. Yes, Denise? So tell us about Indoki. Ah, so yeah, are we doing? Maybe yeah, we can talk about it later. Yeah, or no, take a couple seconds. Oh, I still have three minutes. Um, so the the brief, the brief that we gave the agency was we wanted something simple to pronounce for kids and adults that didn't mean anything, um, and that was international. And and as I said, because education was such a strong part of what we do, the. We, they looked for words that started with ed, and they made up this word. And it ended up being um, a nice little word that has the word kid, sort of a, a kid, even though it doesn't have kid, and education. And that's how we chose it. Back here. So Valerie, um, quick question. How do you emerge this brand, the Montessori brand? Because I noticed it looks like your products are still being called Montessori. Yes. Yeah. Right. So that's what I was saying. We realized we we have two brands. We're using the Montessori brand, but we didn't want the company name to be called Montessori um, because we wanted to have the option to do less Montessori stuff if we wanted it. But but the, the way we integrated Montessori into our brand is the logo is a Montessori material. It's the Pythagoras theory. So, so that's how we integrated it. And, and so we're dealing with, we're actually managing both brands. Yeah. Uh, Valerie, uh, as you know, we were the first to use uh, Montessori work in your title, and now there is a many, many, many apps with Montessori uh, wording in the title or even in the keywords. So what do you think it's still uh, valid to use this, this keyword and this name and it is not as some people are now say oh, put Montessori and really. how do you how do you push the value of Montessori? Um, I think it, the, the, this issue 
Okay, it's new in the App Store, so it, I did it yesterday, Warren. I typed Montessori in the US App Store and I counted how many icons. It was 480 icons that come up. And they don't all have Montessori in their title, but they have Montessori in the, their keywords. Um, but I had to face the same problem with Montessori schools. Because it's not a registered trademark, you have to go through um, and you have to find ways of knowing which ones are good and which ones aren't. And there are ways because there are associations in every single country. So there are people who know who's really doing the real Montessori stuff. And um, to answer your question, I think that the people who really want Montessori for their children, and I mean, I know they're expensive schools, but there were people in my schools that were on very low salaries and were just not, were just you know, not doing anything extravagant to be able to put their children in this in this specific school. So some people are actively looking for Montessori, and I'm hoping. It's always a very difficult experience for, for them because if they type Montessori, they'll have, but then there, there are ways of making sure that you're getting the real stuff. I mean, if you go to our website, I hope that we redesign our website and I hope that you, you get the passion and you get that the Montessori stuff is there. It's not just a word that we're using. I want to, I want to say two points about this. Uh, one is if you use the Montessori word to be able to justify how you use it, in your background materials on the page. So we, and be very modest about it, say we, this, this the way that uh, uh, Seven Academy did with Pepper, we were inspired by, use it like that, this, don't say this is, say we were inspired by the Montessori approach. Use words like that, educators, I think Jane will back me up, will start say, yeah, I, it, that's valid. You know, you can be inspired by something, but you can't be that. So now put that in there and then say your experience. You know, and that's what won me over to you is that you're actually were a Montessori teacher. You know, you, you were beyond the brand. The child is actually at the center of the material. But actually what won me over was I ignored the, the Montessori because it, it has so little meaning now to me. Um, I looked at the what it was and I said, Montessori would love this app. And that's the second point. Um, Watching you present, I think she'd be very proud. Thank yeah. you very much.